Hello everyone, Christina Werner here. Welcome to another card and envelope video here at my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be using the foliage circle die as well as the Love You Greeting stamp set from Simon Says Stamp to create a card and an envelope. Now I'm making the envelope at the same time as the card, so I'm gonna start by creating the envelope itself. I'm using the one, two, three punch board from We Are Memory Keepers. And on the inside of the punch board, it tells me that my paper needs to be eight and one quarter square to create an envelope for an A2 card. So I'm gonna keep that measurement in mind and cut down some watercolor paper. My plan is to do a faux dip dye envelope and card, so I want to use watercolor paper for the actual envelope itself. Now, normal watercolor paper is a little bit too thick to fold without cracking, or at least the watercolor paper that I usually use. So for envelopes specifically, I use 90 pound watercolor paper. This is from Canson. It is 11 by 15. This pad is available in multiple stores. I'll have a link down below if you wanna pick it up. Now I get the 11 by 15 size specifically because I can also use it for larger envelopes. For a five by seven card, you do need a larger envelope. And according to the punch board, you need an, a piece of square paper that is larger than the standard, like, you know, nine by 12. Uh, watercolor paper. So you do have to get a slightly larger watercolor pad in order to make larger envelopes. So I'm just showing really quickly on screen how I made my envelope. I plan to have a more detailed DIY envelope video coming up soon during this month since January 2023's theme is mailing and mail art. So if you need a little bit more instruction on how this envelope was made, specifically with the one, two, three punch board, hang tight. I will have a video for that very soon. So I taped down my envelope to a hard board and I left the top edge of the envelope and the flap completely void of any tape. That's because I'm going to be painting my faux dip dye all the way up on into the flap. For my card itself, I'm using some Fabriano extra white watercolor paper. This is the Artistico line. And I'm just gonna place this to die on the watercolor paper here because I want my watercolor to go behind the die cut. And I wanna make sure that I paint an area large enough that I have a little bit of space to work with once I have everything painted. So I'm taking a pencil and drawing a very generous circle around that die. And then I can just make sure that I paint all the way to the edge of that penciled circle. The watercolor paints I'm using today are Kuratake Zig Gansai Tambi uh, watercolors. And this is a brand new palette. My other one was getting pretty beat up and I was uh, missing a lot of colors because I'd hit pan on all of them. So I didn't want to have to create a whole new uh, kind of swatch on the inside of that lid. So I just swapped the lids of my two palettes so that I had that color reference. I'm starting out with a nice pale pink shade. I've diluted that watercolor quite a bit. And you'll notice that over on my card, I painted uh, coming down to the bottom of the circle. And then on the envelope, I painted kind of halfway up the front of the envelope all the way to most of the flap. And that's because I want the darker area of my faux dip dye to end right at the fold on the envelope. And then um, I want the dark area to be, you know, right at the top of that fold on the flap too. This will make more sense as we get going here. So I've created a, another a puddle of paint that's a little bit more concentrated in color. And I've painted that and hit that with my heat tool. Adding even more of that color and then I'll come down to the bottom on that circle and then go up and over the fold on my envelope. Now I want you to take note of the difference in color and how it dries on these two different watercolor papers. I'm adding a little more red violet shade here. Um, as you notice on the right side for the card, the paper is taking the color much better than over on that thinner watercolor paper. It's just the nature of the thickness of the paper. Um, if you think about it, a nice fluffy towel, like a bath towel, will absorb more water 
than a very thin linen like kitchen towel. Think of it that way. The thinner your paper, the less water it can absorb. And so you just have to paint a little bit differently. Now, faux dip dye watercolor, this is this technique that I've, I don't know, I'm sure it's been around forever, but I kind of came up with it years ago and I've just called it faux dip dye. It's basically adding layer upon layer upon layer of watercolor. It's a lot of paint. And the thicker paper over on the card side is handling all of that paint really, really well. It absorbs into the paper. There's no problem at all. On the envelope, however, I can tell that that watercolor is starting to kind of create a coating on top of that paper, the surface of the paper. So I'm going to hit this one last time and then I'm going to be done with all the painting. I don't think the envelope could handle any more paint at all. I'm going to set the envelope aside for a while and work on the card. So I've taken my die and I'm cutting it out of an A2 card front. This will be the actual front of my card. I'm running it through my die cutting machine and it's going to cut out that circle window uh, while it has that uh, kind of grouping of stems and flowers at the bottom. I just use a little bit of Simus Stamp Terrific Tape to hold that die in place while I run it through my die cutting machine. So I'm going to remove the interior of my window and then I can use this over top of my watercolor panel. So it's eventually going to go over top like that. And just to make sure I have enough space for my greeting, I'm going to get my stamp set out and kind of just hover it over the top of this area to determine which greeting I want and also if I will have enough room because that will really determine the positioning of that white cardstock on top of my watercolor. So I figured that out and I'm going to use the sending love and hugs and there's plenty of room there at the top and that the descender on that lowercase g kind of nestles right into the, that stem of leaves. It's going to look great. So I positioned that stamp over my watercolor paper right inside my misty and then close the door of my misty so that I can transfer the stamp to the door of my misty. I'm going to be uh, doing some heat embossing, so I'm stamping in Versamark ink. Now, I did end up stamping this twice, and I think I probably should have only stamped it once because as you'll see here in a minute after I apply my embossing powder and I melt it, it was just a little bit thick. It was a little blobby. I think I would have got a more crisp uh, greeting if I would have only stamped it once, but it's still legible, still looks great, so I moved on with my card. So I'm going to take the white panel for the front of my card, place it right over that watercolor, and I'm taking a pencil and I'm going to mark around the outer edge so that I can cut my watercolor piece down to have it nestle right behind. I don't want it to be the exact size of my card itself because a little bit of that watercolor, like the color that I've used, would show on the edge of the card when you tip the card. So I'm using a trimmer and I'm trimming it down just slightly smaller than those pencil lines that I've traced from the white panel. This is just going to make, make sure that it's smaller than the actual card itself and it will help hide any of that color that might be peeking out from underneath. I've applied some foam tape. This is foam adhes adhesive from Waffle Flower. And I just picked up two of the narrow pieces to make them a little thicker. And then on the actual uh, white panel itself, I adhered the foam tape on the back of the panel going right around that circle. And I also added a couple additional pieces in the corner so that it would kind of hold up those areas. I don't want any areas to not have adhesive underneath so that they would become kind of saggy or cave in. For the areas behind the flowers and leaves, I cut my foam tape into very, very tiny squares. Now this was very meticulous and kind of fussy, but it was one of those things that I knew I would have to do to make sure I have the best results for my card. And since this card is so simple and clean, I really needed to make sure that my craftsmanship was top notch so that it looks really nice. You kind of have no error or room for error when you do such a simple card like this. So if you do end up making a card similar to mine, just take your time, be very, very careful, and uh, you'll, you'll have no problems. It'll be great. So I place that right over the top of my watercolor panel 
got everything lined up. And then in order to adhere this to my card front, I took a little bit more of that foam tape and I just ran it along the bottom and also along this side. That'll hide any of that watercolor paper underneath. I put my regular tape runner adhesive on the back of the watercolor paper. This is a Tombow Extreme Adhesive Tape Runner. And then I put that panel face down inside my Misty. And I took a prepared card base, made sure everything was right. And then I just nestled that down into that corner. And that lines everything up so that my kind of watercolor and die cut window panel are on my card base perfectly matched up. That's a great way to get your panels adhered and not have to worry about possibly getting them a little skewed when you go to adhere everything together. So my card is basically done. Let's move on to the envelope and I'm gonna fold that down, kind of see how it looks. And then I'm going to start assembling my envelope. I'm gonna use a really strong adhesive. This is red line tape from Simus' stamp. And I'm applying the red line tape a little bit away from the corner on this bottom flap of my envelope. I'm also not taking it all the way to the bottom of the flap. I wanna leave just a little bit of a gap there. And I'll explain more why in a minute here. So I'm making sure that any of that red line tape doesn't overlap those two side flaps. And it looks like that one on the right hand side did just a little bit. So I peeled up my red line tape just a tiny bit. I haven't pressed it into the paper yet. So I was able to remove it and I just snipped off a little bit of that extra adhesive. So now I'm really pressing that red line tape into the watercolor paper and then I'll remove the release paper. In order to assemble the envelope, you only need those two bits of adhesive and I'm just putting it right there and it adheres everything really well. I'm going to take my bone folder and go over those areas as well as the folds on my envelope. That's going to make it really flat and adhere it really well. I'm now going to take that same red line tape and put it on the flap of my envelope. I'm going to do that now so that it's ready to go as soon as I have my card inside. I'm gonna press that tape down and then I'll just leave it open while I work on my card. So I picked out some postage stamp stamps and I picked out quite a few. Um, I wanted them to match so I picked out some pinks and purples and this is plenty of postage to get this card to the recipient. Um, I'm gonna go over how you determine how much postage to use uh, in a future video for this month but I did take into account how thick my card was and also the weight of the card. For these vintage stamps that, that have regular adhesive on the back that you're supposed to get wet, I decided to not even try adding water to them and instead I used a glue stick on the back of them. For the flap of my envelope, I'm putting my return address, my name and return address, but it was very hard to get this white gel pen to uh, cover up the area on this watercolor. It had such a thick coating of watercolor on it. So I, you know, I left it the way it is now for just for now, but I think eventually before I mail this envelope, I might just put a label on the back just to make sure that it, it has a legible address on the back. I penciled on Elizabeth's address and then I drew on some lines so I could uh, put the street address. So Elizabeth kindly allowed me to use her address for this envelope. Um, I have her permission, so thank you so much, Elizabeth. If you would like to submit your address for possible future mail art videos, uh, there is a link down below in the video description uh, where you can submit your address. But please just know if your address is chosen, it will be shown in, in its entirety online. So just be aware if you have a PO box or even if it's you know, your office address for where you work, something like that would make you feel a little bit more comfortable sharing your address online, you could definitely use that as well. The two colored markers I'm using for Elizabeth's name are both uh, Pigment Deco brush markers from Karen. Um, I chose these because I really love the colors and, they, and I thought it really went well. For the actual address itself, unfortunately the pen I'm using is discontinued. It is no longer sold, but it is a waterproof gel pen. So just any waterproof uh, marker would do for this. Uh, that's probably the, the safest. 
after I had her name and address, I went over all of the pencil with an eraser. I believe this is a zero monoline eraser for, from Tombow. I think it's called a zero eraser. I'll have a link down below. Now for all of my cards that I send out to my mail arts uh, address submission people, I always include this little post-it that has a little message on it that says, you know, you can take this post, post-it note out and send it on to a loved one. And I also just write a little message inside. And I just, I did that now and I showed it on camera just to show that I will get this in the mail as soon as possible. <laughs> in order to help protect this envelope, I'm using some Tim Holtz Distress Micro Glaze. And I get a little bit of that Micro Glaze on this mini round blending tool. And then I'm going to go over all the areas of the envelope, except for the postage stamps. I'm going to swirl over the top of this, but I'm purposely not going over the postage stamps. And that's because this distress glaze puts a very slick coating over everything I apply it to. And if I were to put it over top of the postage stamps, it would make it so the post office can't even cancel these stamps. They would try to stamp something over the top, you know, to cancel it out, and it would just slide right off. It really is great for protecting your envelope, but it is not great for the post office. So leave those stamps completely untouched when you use microglaze. But other than that, <clears throat> excuse me, other than that, you can apply the microglaze to every area of your envelope. So I really swirl that on and make sure I get everything coated. And once you have everything swirled on and the whole area coated, then you're going to take some paper towel and you're going to buff off the excess. And that really presses the microglaze into the fibers of the paper as well. And so I like to just use a paper towel underneath while I'm applying it. And then I'll use that same paper towel kind of balled up for uh, buffing over this whole area. Now you'll notice on my paper towel, I have just a little bit of pink. That's a little bit of that watercolor coming up. But other than that, it really does a great job of putting that microglaze down onto the envelope and it does protect that watercolor. It's not gonna protect it from large amounts of water. If the envelope gets wet, just like any other envelope, it probably will cause some damage. But for just every day going through the mail, I think it's gonna do great. So that's what I like to do on all my watercolor envelopes. Thanks so much for watching today. If you have any questions about the card or the envelope, uh, don't hesitate to put those comments and questions down below. I will answer them as soon as I can. Please join me on Friday for a live card making session. I'll be back on Friday at 11 a.m. Mountain Time and I hope to see you there. Thanks for watching.